Venus. If you landed on Venus, this hot planet would crush you like a plastic bottle. It would be painful, but don't worry, it would only last five seconds. The longest five seconds of your life. And just wait till you see what happens on Mars. It's unsettling. Venus has an extremely dense atmosphere, and with that dense atmosphere comes crushing pressure. Literally, it would crush you. The Venusian atmospheric pressure is 92 times higher than the pressure you experience on Earth. It would only take a millisecond before it started crumpling your spacesuit. After one second, your suit's integrity would be compromised. You'd be trapped in the imploding spacesuit with no way out. And that's when your body would begin to collapse. In the next two seconds, your skin and muscles would compress. Your blood vessels would pop. Your organs would fail. Finally, you'd lose consciousness. And just like that, you'd be gone. Venus looks like a beautiful place, but it's deadly, and being crushed by extreme pressure is just one of the many ways you die here. Remember the dense Venusian atmosphere? Well, not only does it create crushing pressure, but it also generates the greenhouse effect. Yeah, Venus is hot. Instantly boiling your insides kinda hot. Even if you could somehow withstand all that bone-crushing pressure, the heat would get you. It feels hot. Like being toasted. Like bread being toasted. You guys know what toast is. Warning. Internal temperature rising. The surface temperature on Venus reaches 465 degrees Celsius, 869 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost as hot as the lava coming out of Earth's volcanoes. You'd be feeling the effect of this intense heat within seconds. After one minute, your internal temperature would start rising. Q heat exhaustion. What if guy? I don't feel so good. Body temperature 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degrees Fahrenheit, and rising. At this point, you'd experience nausea, fatigue, and extreme sweating. Your internal organs would start to overheat. Yeah, it's getting dark. It's getting dark. After 10 minutes, you'd lose consciousness. Now you just have minutes left before suffering brain damage and complete cardiac arrest. On this planet, heat stroke is no joke. Nothing's a joke here, really. The Venus in air is unbreathable. It's made up of 96.5% carbon dioxide and 3.5% nitrogen. Which means taking just one breath of this atmosphere would suffocate you. And if that's not enough, Venus's sulfuric rain would corrode your spacesuit and burn your skin. As far as the survival situation on Venus goes, it's a 1 out of 10. Would not recommend. Mercury. Now this is Mercury, the closest planet to the Sun. Like I haven't just suffered a massive heat incineration already. Come on, what if guy? Well, Mercury has a little secret. It's actually extremely freezing. At least on the night side. Surface temperature, minus 180 degrees Celsius minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, of course I knew that. Everybody knows that. And here. I'll let you in on a little secret. What if Explorers Club on Patreon is on a roll? That's right. Get access to early episodes and you can see me die a lot. I die a lot. Here's the thing about Mercury. Unlike its planetary neighbor, Venus, it doesn't have an atmosphere. And without an atmosphere, there's nothing to trap the sun's heat and keep it close to the planet during the long Mercurian nights. Even though Mercury is just 58 million kilometers, 36 million miles, from the sun, as soon as night hits, it cools down rapidly. Oh, when you first land, you'll be okay. You could walk around and explore the planet. Yeah, Rico, there's, like, a little numbness in my fingers. Is that normal? Numbness in the extremities indicates the early stages of hypothermia. Nah, I'm okay. It's like minus 180 degrees here. You know, of course, it's a little chilly. What a shocker. Hypothermia would take a little time to kick in. It starts with a tingling feeling in your fingers, and suddenly you begin to shiver. Yeah, I don't feel any shivers. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I feel a few shivers. It's not that bad. Warning, your body temperature has dropped to 35 degrees Celsius, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Can't feel my fingers. After 10 minutes in this extreme cold, you'd barely be able to move. Warning, core body temperature at 32 degrees Celsius, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Return to the spaceship immediately. Your muscles would feel stiff. You'd feel confused and cold. You'd feel extremely disoriented. Everything would slow down for you. But you wouldn't die. Not yet. Warming. Core body temperature now 28 degrees Celsius, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Even now, you'd still be alive. You could barely function. But you're alive. 
it would take about 60 minutes for Mercury's dark side to kill you. Slow, cold, and painful. But hey, at least you'd get to see some of Mercury's views before you collapsed from the extreme cold. I give Mercury's night side a 3 out of 10. But Mercury has a day side, too. And it's burning hot. The temperature here hits 427 degrees Celsius 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Just slightly cooler than the temperature on Venus. And it's not the intense heat that would kill you. It's extreme radiation, too. You'd feel all of it the moment you stepped out of your spaceship. Your body would start overheating. If you didn't have the protection of your spacesuit, your skin would immediately get radiation burns. My hands. My hands are burning. It wouldn't be pretty. All that radiation would quickly damage your DNA. It takes one one thousand of a second to kick off that process. Within the next hour, your cells would mutate and die. So make sure to wear a spacesuit no matter how hot it feels. Danger. Core body temperature increased to 39 degrees Celsius 102 degrees Fahrenheit. After five minutes of these burning conditions, you'd begin to feel the effects of hypothermia. If your suit's cooling system were to fail, you'd experience an amount of heat you've never felt in your life. It burns. My hands. Oh, it's like they're on fire. It's exactly like they're on fire. This sudden overheating would make you nauseous. After 10 minutes, you'd be like a piece of toast. Your body temperature would hit 42 degrees Celsius. And if you've ever had a fever like that, you'd know at this point you'd be in delirium. Exactly like that. Your muscles would become weak, and your organs would start to shut down. Now you'd be unconscious, in the middle of having heat stroke and being blasted by radiation. At this point, you wouldn't have long. Hot side of Mercury rates are 2 out of 10 for me. All right, let's look at Mars. The red planet sounds a lot more promising. Where else in the solar system would you want to establish a human base? Well, not so fast. Mars sits just outside the sun's habitable zone. It doesn't have water or magnetosphere. Its atmosphere is incredibly thin. It's not a place you could settle into comfortably. What do you mean? Mars is great. That is, until you try to breathe on it. On Mars, the air is mostly made up of carbon dioxide. You'd have to keep your spacesuit on at all times. Because if you didn't, you'd die. Spacesuit breach detected. It only takes a minor suit malfunction for Mars to kill you. The first few seconds of inhaling the air on Mars would feel confusing. What's confusing about this? I'm dying. You'd be gasping for oxygen and starting to breathe more rapidly. At the same time, your breached spacesuit would start to decompress. And that would be truly awful. The atmospheric pressure on Mars is only 0.6% of what you have on Earth. As soon as your spacesuit gave in, all the pressure inside it, the pressure keeping you alive, would escape. Warning. Danger of Ebulism. Warning. Ebulism is what happens next. As your suit's pressure suddenly dropped, your body would experience painful blood boiling conditions. You see, your blood and other bodily fluids have gases inside them. Exposed to the low pressure environment on Mars, these gases would boil. Your skin would swell and puff up. After about seven minutes, you'd be dead. This is going to be pretty graphic. Somebody put a warning on the screen. Mars would give you hope and then gruesomely kill you the first chance it got. I'd seriously reconsider coming here. Because even if you made absolutely sure that your spacesuit was safe and wouldn't suffer a life-ending breach, Mars will find another way to wipe you off its face. And that other way would be dust storms. Dust storms on Mars are wild. They can cover the entire planet, and they last for weeks or even months. Can't see crap in here. It's not that those storms are strong. They are not. But the dust particles are so fine that they get into your spacesuit easily and scratch it from the inside. Matt Damon could do this. So can I. Come on. These fine particles would clog your air filters and do all kinds of damage to your equipment, from cutting off your life support systems to knocking out your heat regulation. Warning. 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 Oxygen system failure. Well, that's Mars for you. I give it a 6 out of 10 just for the epicness of this whole death situation. Oh, and for giving you a chance to live here, just maybe not for too long. I'd give Mars a 0. There's one more rocky planet lurking on the outskirts of the solar system. Oh, sorry. Hold on. My editor is saying it's actually not a planet. It's a dwarf planet. Anyway, Pluto will be the last deadly place to visit on this list right after the giants. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, and as a gas giant, it has a number of ways to kill you. Being twice as massive as all the other planets in the solar system combined, Jupiter has astronomical pressure. 
This planet is basically a gigantic ball of hydrogen and helium. It doesn't have a solid surface you could step on. You'd fall all the way through its atmosphere. Although it wouldn't be that long of a fall for you. Let me guess. Suffocating. Extreme pressure. What else is new? Lightning. Yeah, that's right. Jupiter is home to some of the most violent lightning storms around. Okay, well, that's great. But I don't see any here. Well, of course not. In the upper atmosphere, the weather is not as dramatic. The atmospheric pressure here is only one-tenth of the pressure we feel on Earth. Capsule systems are stable. Some 50 kilometers 31 miles below Jupiter's clouds, you'd feel serious turbulence. Wind here would be strong, reaching up to 360 kilometers power 224 miles power. Static buildup detected in the atmosphere. As these chaotic winds violently battered you through the storm clouds, the lightning bolts would strike too close for comfort. The atmosphere around you would be highly charged. And then, one of these bolts would strike the capsule head on. This massive lightning would release enough energy to power a city or two. But for your capsule, it would be game over. The electrical systems would fail, the oxygen supply would fail, and the temperature inside the capsule would drop significantly. You'd now be trapped inside a powerless, leaking capsule surrounded by a deadly storm. I give Jupiter a 5 out of 10. Could recommend. This gas giant may not be as large as Jupiter, but it's definitely the most majestic. Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system. And just like Jupiter, it's a gas giant made up of hydrogen and helium, with no solid surface. Deep down in its clouds, the unimaginable pressure of this world turns hydrogen into liquid metal. And intense storms have winds raging at 1,800 km per hour, 1,120 miles per hour. It's windy. It's hot. It's dangerous. And you might die before you even enter Saturn's atmosphere. What makes Saturn the most marvelous planet in this planetary hood is also what makes it dangerous on approach. Saturn's rings. Yeah, yeah, I see them all right. These rings are made up of billions of small chunks of ice and rock, ranging from grains of dust to icy chunks the size of a house. Saturn has had its rings for a few hundred million years, and it'll have them for the next few hundred million years until these icy rocks rain down on the gas giant. The thing is, these rings move extremely fast like 70,000 kilometers per hour, 43,500 miles per hour fast. If you're not careful, your ship might just crash into them. Saturn gets an 8 out of 10. Uranus is a beautiful, stormy, fart-smelling, deadly ice giant. It has the coldest atmosphere of all the planets in the solar system, and it can kill you in many ways. One way to go on Uranus would be to suffocate in its gases. Oh, not the fart gases. Close enough. 2% of the Uranian atmosphere is methane, a gas that's toxic to humans. Now, 2% might not sound like a whole lot, but it's concentrated enough to kill you within minutes. Maybe Uranian high-speed particles moving at 900 km per hour, 560 miles per hour, eroded your suit. Or extreme temperatures of minus 224 degrees Celsius minus 371.2 degrees Fahrenheit made it brittle and caused it to crack. Or hydrogen and methane had a chemical reaction with your suit materials, corroding them. On Uranus, anything could cause a breach. And even the smallest breach would lead to toxic methane exposure. But Uranus has other surprising ways to off you. Like turning you into a human-sized diamond. You'd have to survive the trip deeper into Uranus to be turned into a diamond. All the way to some 10,000 kilometers, 6,300 miles, below its cloud tops. That's where the pressure is so intense and the temperature is so high that carbon atoms crystallize into diamonds. About 18% of the human body is carbon. So you'd be about to undergo the most precious change of your lifetime. I'd give Uranus a 10 out of 10. Epic. Sparkling with a bit of fun. Great planet to perish on. Neptune. Now, this is the last ice giant in the solar system and the most distant planet from the sun Neptune. Neptune. It looks a lot like Uranus. It's true. Neptune has a similar mass and size as Uranus, and it's even made up of some of the same materials like hydrogen, helium, iced ammonia, methane, and water. Only Neptune has one thing Uranus does not. Extreme winds detected. Neptune has the fastest winds in the entire solar system. These gusts reach speeds of 2,100 km per hour, 1,300 miles per hour. They are not just winds. They are supersonic winds. Hey! Nobody told me that we were filming a Top Gun sequel in here. Okay, it gets worse too. Not only are these winds extremely fast, 
but they are also turbulent. They create swirling vortices that would throw your spaceship in different directions. Intense atmospheric pressure, winds, and methane ice would start ripping the ship apart. But that's not all. If you got caught in the Neptunian supersonic vortex, the winds would violently spin the ship, and this centrifugal force would exert some serious G-forces. As Neptune's winds accelerated your ship to about 10 G-S, everything inside your body would feel heavy. That would be your organs getting compressed inside your body. Your blood would pool around your legs and cause oxygen deprivation to your brain. You'd lose consciousness pretty quickly. It would only take about five minutes for the ship and your body to lose their structural integrity completely and disintegrate into the Neptunian atmosphere. Well, that was pretty violent. I give Neptune a 2 out of 10. Pluto. I know you guys like Pluto, so since you asked so nicely, I thought I'd give you a little treat and show you what it's like here. Pluto isn't exactly a planet. It's a dwarf planet on the outskirts of the solar system. It's smaller than Earth's moon. But even this tiny rock has ways to kill you. It's cold in here. You feel that? Temperature reading, minus 239 degrees Celsius minus 398 degrees Fahrenheit. Pluto is even further away from the sun than Neptune, so it barely gets any of the sun's energy. One small malfunction in your spacesuit insulation, and you'd freeze to death. You'd feel the frostbite setting in after just 30 seconds. Another 30 seconds later, your bodily fluids would start turning into icicles, and you'd get extreme hypothermia as an unpleasant bonus that you didn't ask for. After two minutes, your body temperature would drop below 30 degrees Celsius 86 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the exact moment when you'd lose consciousness. After three minutes, your body would freeze and your organs would fail. You'd become one with Pluto's frozen landscape, quick and almost painless. That's a 7 out of 10 for Pluto. It, it did hurt. Well, that's it for this solar system's planets. Where should we send Chase to die? I'm sorry. Where should we send Chase to explore next? Maybe we'll ship them all the way to an exoplanet outside of our planetary corner. But that's a story for another what I have. Support us on Patreon and help us send Chase to his next adventure. Thanks, space explorers. That was pretty violent. I give. What planet are we on? Neptune. Chase is dead. Okay. Subscribe now and become a part of Expedition Diaries for more.